All right, in this video, we're going to take a look at how to create a quiz in Moodle. So once you're in your course, as always, come up to edit mode and turn that on. Once you're here, you scroll down to the area of the course that you want to add your quiz. So you add an activity or resource. And once here, you come to all and you scroll down to the quiz feature. Uh, you give it a quiz. So we're going to give it a quick title. You give it a quiz, you give it a title. Uh, you provide a description if you want to. In this case, you might provide some instructions, some guidance, some information for them to prepare. You know, this will look at, uh, this will be based on this or based on that. I tend to like to do knowledge checks. So it might be, you know, framing this as that knowledge check as a low stakes, you know, I'm just, uh, you know, let's see where you are and that will help me, you know, make decisions about what we do next within the course. Then you get a list of different uh, choices, and some of these are easier to figure out than others. Timing, uh, so this is when the quiz is open and when the quiz is closed. So again, I typically will leave these largely open. Um, the time limit, I again, unless I have a really good reason, I am going to not uh, use a time limit. I don't think they're often useful. Uh, and usually again, if I'm doing it for knowledge checks, they are, uh, they just are, are not as helpful. So when time expires, uh, that doesn't really again matter if, if we're not using the time limit. Under grade, again, I would I would give this a category. So this might be uh, quizzes or knowledge checks. It might be tied to something else. I'll skip the grade to pass. Uh, under uh, a lot attempts allowed. Uh, there may be different reasons. I may allow unlimited or I may allow two or three if it's a knowledge check just to kind of see, you know, how they did the first time and how they do the second time. Uh, which grade grading method is which grade will you accept? So highest grade, average attempt, um, first or last. Layout is about the questions. And so you can do a new page every question um, or you can do a new page every three questions, five questions or never all questions on one page. If you're doing like a five question knowledge check, I would just do all on one page. It's less downloading or it's less clicking next, less moving around. Um, and if students know that it's only five questions, it doesn't seem as overwhelming. Uh, navigation method here, you can kind of see, um, are they able to kind of move around freely or do they have to go from one to the next to the next? Question behavior, do you want to shuffle your questions? Um, and if you do, uh, that's fine. Uh, sometimes, depending on how you're structuring the knowledge check, that may or may not make sense. Uh, and then uh, how questions behaved, this is largely, if you get really into doing a lot of quizzing, there's a different ways you can kind of play around with this, like adaptive mode and, uh, and the like. And, and those are features um, you can learn more about, but definitely end up um, taking a lot more time and consideration and, and whatnot. Each attempt builds on the last. This basically means if you got, you know, three out of five wrong or three out of five right on your first attempt, your second attempt, you're only going to have those last two questions to address. Uh, review options is all about when they can actually look at all of the different potential feedback. Um, so you can kind of adjust that accordingly. Appearance, uh, you can actually have the user see that, um, see themselves uh, or, or their icons if they have one up in the right hand corner. Uh, and then, you know, this is very much about kind of how things appear, which uh, largely I would skip over. Safe exam browser, um, extra restrictions on attempts. I'm skipping over those. If you're interested in those, there's lots of, you know, there's lots of things out there, but it's not something I tend to uh, think is really useful in, in the context in which uh, I'm teaching and working with faculty. Overall feedback, you know, you can kind of create these grade boundaries that, oh, if they get 100, this is like the general feedback that they get, um, especially if they are graded automatically. Um, so if if these are all questions that are automatically graded versus like a short essay or things like that, um, this is the feedback they would autom automatically get if they got, you know, 100, and then you can add more. So you could do it for every 5% interval, or you could do it for 10%, 20%, what have you. Under activity completion, here again, you can play around with how this, what it looks like for this to compl be completed. So uh, you can have, you know, no activity completion, manually marked by the students or show activity when things are met. So for me, 
I typically, on if it's a knowledge check, it's going to be they must view this activity, they must receive a grade, especially if it's a knowledge check, those are all going to be self-checked or, or automatically answered questions. Um, Depending on how you're using, you know, quizzing features, you could also have it. They must receive a passing grade, so long as you allow for them to, you know, keep taking it. Um, so you play around with a couple of attempts there, and then this is where you'd want to play with, you know, when should they finish this by, um, so that again it shows up in their different um, calendar and settings that, oh, this really should be completed by this particular date. This is the first half of creating a quiz. Once you are done with this, uh, you actually don't want to save and return, you want to save and display. And once you save and display, you're in, as you can see, the amazing quiz. And now you actually want to build out your questions. So you're going to add a question, and you're in the add questions page, and this is where it can be a little redundant, but bear with me. Uh, over here where you see add. Now you can choose a new question from a question bank or a random question. From a question bank, after you've started building questions within Moodle, uh, these are storable and accessible, so you can start to pull questions from there. Uh, and random question, once you have that bank, you can actually you know, select a subgroup of those questions and have it randomly pull from that. So let's go to add new questions. As you can see, we have a list of different choices, and whenever I click on one on the right, it gives me, uh, it tells me what that what that question will look like. Um, so a lot of different options here, and even down here, a description. So sometimes you might want to take a pause and provide some explanation, um, or it may be a paragraph that you want them to read and then answer questions, or or it could be an image, or or many other things. So lots of different questions. We're going to do a triple, uh, simple true false. I'm going to add it, and then one thing to note is when you start to see category, here you can play around and think about um, where do you want this question to sit. If you think this is a question you're going to be using in different classes, for instance, maybe you're having them do a weekly reflection, um, you might actually want it to sit in your system, um, and that means it would be kind of less buried into this specific course and this specific um, this specific activity, right? So if, as you look at these, these are different levels within Moodle. System is Moodle-wide. Category course templates, that's the category that this course that I'm in right now fits into. Course, well, this is the course that I'm actually in. In quiz, amazing quiz, this is the actual quiz that I'm using. So if I created another quiz, maybe it's um, not so amazing quiz, I could I would see now here it would be quiz as well as not so amazing quiz and I could choose um, where the default setting is for that. So it's a lot of, uh, you don't have to really think about that too much right now, but just kind of be aware if you're thinking broadly about how you're going to be using questions across courses, it's something to, to consider. Uh, so for right now, I'm going to just uh, leave it, I'm going to actually put it in the system and I'm going to give it a name, uh, I got to give it a, a name, so I might call this, um, this is one of the weird things about the, the Moodle features, you need both the question name and the question text, so I might just say true false, and even though that might be a little redundant because of what it is, um, let's see, I am a 10 foot tall, uh, Porcupine. There we go. That is my my question. Um, and then down here is what the correct answer is. And so I can decide: Do I want it true or false uh, as the correct answer? So I'm going to do false. Uh, and notice I can develop some feedback for the response for true and the response for false. Uh, I can allow for multiple, tr or this tells me, yeah, for this is really only one try. Um, and then I can save changes and continue editing, or I can save changes and it will bring me to here. And now I have my first question. Um, it tells me how many points there are, and it, I can play around with the order of this. Um, it, or not just the order, but the, this is more about version control. So if I edit this, it will have now version one and version two. I can use this to actually preview the question or I can delete the question. 
Now that I have all of that, I can go in and I can add a new question and go from there. So as you can see, there's a, there's a lot there um, in terms of building out your questions, but um, if you're only doing it a handful of times, you know, you, you kind of get used to it. And uh, if you're able to borrow things and adapt things, that can also help as well. All right. Hope this is helpful. Thank you so much.